So I'm pretty late to the Sega Genesis party. I only just got mine last year. The main games I wanted were Contra Hardcore and Castlevania Bloodlines, but considering I'm generally not too much of a fan of Sonic, Brawlers, Shmups, and arcade ports, I tend to be a little bit wary of recommendations coming from longtime Sega fans. But I know there's got to be other Genesis games out there that I would love, but maybe haven't given serious consideration to. In fact, I just recently played through Shinobi 3, which was maybe on the outer edges of my radar, but I had no plans to really look into it. When I was offered an unwanted copy, complete in box, I took it for a test drive to see if it was worth adding to my backlog. I expected to play for just a few levels and say, well, yeah, I, I guess it's cool enough. But I ended up playing all the way to the sixth level before I got a total game over, having a blast and itching to give it another go. Historically, my ninja games of choice have been the first two Ninja Gaiden games on NES and the Goemon series. I, I can count those, right? But as attached to all of those as I am, I can't deny that Shinobi 3 is the only one that really made me feel like a ninja. The controls take a little getting used to, but you can pull off some pretty serious ninja crap. Your basic attack is throwing shurikens, which are limited in supply, but there are plenty of pickups. If you're close to an enemy, you'll use melee attacks instead. Check out this awesome running slice. The timing was a little difficult for me to perform consistently, but it's really neat. You can even do a good old Ninja Turtles style dive kick. Wall jumps feel really cool, though some areas demand a level of finesse that I never quite learned well enough to pull off without getting hurt. Double jumps require more precise input than in most games. The right timing is somewhere close to the top of your jump. When you hold the up direction, you can grab onto almost any ceiling surface, which adds a cool element to the level design. And one nice ability that I kept forgetting exists is a defensive pose, which prevents damage from smaller attacks. Joe Musashi also has four ninjutsu magic skills that can be selected from the pause screen. You have one spell use for every life and can find more in the levels. At first, I was mostly just using the invincibility ninjutsu. It grants free hits, and I liked using it near the start of boss encounters so that I wouldn't lose my powered up shurikens. I tried the fire ninjutsu once. It, it was okay, I guess. But a buddy suggested that the other two ninjutsu that I'd been ignoring were actually incredibly useful. He was right. The magic for higher jumps, which makes me think of Zelda 2, was incredibly helpful during the falling rock sequence in the second to last level, which makes me think of Kid Dracula. Maybe I could brag a little that I did clear this part once with just regular jumps. The last ninjutsu power sounds terrible. It's a self-destruct that deals heavy damage to enemies but costs one life. You can't blame me for not giving it a fair shot, right? But your fresh life starts with full health and one ninjutsu use. This essentially lets you end a life that was about to end poorly anyway, deal great damage, continue the battle without restarting, and you could do it again if you have more extra lives, or you could just use invincibility if you don't. It's a really impressive game. It looks good. It sounds good. The box advertises real ninja sound effects. Whoa. A lot of the action sequences give me more of a Contra vibe than, say, a Ninja Gaiden vibe. Even some of the bosses look like something that might have come straight out of Contra. Or Godzilla. I think it's pretty interesting how this is yet another ninja game in a modern slash futuristic setting. 
of course there's nothing wrong with that, so long as it's fun. If you're a fan of challenging side-scrollers with limited continues and can take a small learning curve for the slightly technical controls, I think you'll find a lot to love here. I'd actually played Shinobi 3 very briefly once before when I rented the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, which really wasn't the right kind of scenario for me to get into it. At any rate, when I had the chance to really sit down with Shinobi 3 and figure out if I liked it, the answer was yes, big time. I'm definitely going to hunt down the second game, Revenge of Shinobi. And since I only beat Shinobi 3 on the default difficulty setting with two more to go, it looks like I've got plenty of ninja themed fun and suffering to look forward to.